Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this beam using flexibility matrix method. Before analyzing, let us see the beam on time. In this beam, we are having two spans, span AB and span BC. In the span AB, we are having a point load acting on the center. In the span BC, we are having uniformly distributed load acting for the full span. Span AB is 10 meter long. Span BC is 8 meter long. There are three supports in this beam in the point A, in the point B, and in the point C. There are supports. All the supports are roller supports. In the flexibility matrix method, we have to find the degree of static indeterminacy of the structure. In this beam, we are having three unknown reactions Ra, Rb, and Rc. In the point A and in the point C, there will be no movement because they are simply supported ends. In the point B, there will be a movement MB. MB will be acting like a pair. On one side it will be acting in the clockwise direction and in another side it will be acting in the anti-clockwise direction. So it will be getting eliminated. So when we calculate the number of unknown reactions and movements, we should not consider MB. In this case we are having only three reactions RA, RB and RC. So the number of unknown reactions and movements is equal to 3. The available equilibrium equations are 2. Summation of movements is equal to 0. Summation of vertical forces is equal to 0. Since in this beam we are not having any horizontal forces, we should not consider summation of horizontal forces is equal to 0. So the available equilibrium equations are 2. Now let us calculate the degree of static indeterminacy. 3 minus 2 we will get 1. Now we have to make this beam statically determinate. Let us remove MB. When we remove MB, this beam will be split into two simply supported beams. By removing MB, we have made this statically indeterminate structure into statically determinate structure. This is called released structure. We have made released structure. Now let us make the coordinates diagram. In this analysis, we are having only one coordinate. In the point B, we are having the coordinate because we have removed MB. We know that MB will be acting in both of the directions. Let us keep for the span AB in the anticlockwise direction and for the span BC in the clockwise direction. Now let us see the formula to calculate the final moments. P matrix is equal to delta matrix inverse into delta matrix minus delta L matrix. Here, P matrix is equal to final moments or forces. Delta matrix is equal to flexibility matrix. Delta matrix is equal to final displacements. Delta L matrix is equal to displacement in the coordinate direction. So, this is the easiest formula. If we calculate these three values, we can calculate the final moments. In this formula, first let us find delta L matrix. To find out the delta L matrix, we have to make conjugate beams using the loads in the beam. For the beam AB, we are having a point load 72 kN acting on the center. If the point load is acting on the center, the maximum bending moment formula in a simply supported beam is WL by 4. Here, W is equal to 72, L is equal to 10. You can apply in the formula, finally we are getting 180. If the UDL is acting for the full span in a simply supported beam, 
the formula for maximum bending moment in the center is W L square by 8. Here W is equal to 36 and length is 8 meter. We can apply in the formula. Finally, we are getting 288. We know that if your point load is acting, the bending moment diagram will be in the shape of a triangle. If UDL is acting, the bending moment diagram will be in the shape of a parabola. In the conjugate beams, the moment should be divided by EI. Now, let us find the displacement in the coordinate direction. In this problem, we are having only one coordinate that is in the point B. So, in the point B, we have to find the displacement. Here, the displacement is the slope. So, we have to calculate the slope in the point B because we removed MB from the point B. So, we have to calculate the rotation which is slope. In the conjugate beams, slope is the shear force and deflection is the movement. Now, we have to calculate the slope. So, we have to find the shear force in these conjugate beams in the point B dash. We know that the shear force is the summation of the forces either in the left or right side. But in the point B dash, we are only having the reactions. We are not having any other forces. So, if you want to calculate the shear force in the point B dash, we have to calculate the reactions. First, let us calculate the reaction in the span A dash B dash. This is uniformly varying load acting in a simply supported beam. This is a symmetrical diagram. So, we have to divide the total load by 2. When we do that, we will get the reactions. To get the total load, we have to calculate the area. Consider a triangle of breadth B and height H. The area formula is half into breadth into height. Using the formula, we can calculate the area. Here, the breadth is 10, the height is 180 by EI. So, we will get the area. To get the reaction, we have to divide the whole area by 2. After the calculation, we are getting 450 by EI. Now, let us take B dash C dash and then find out RB dash. This is also a symmetrical diagram. So, to calculate the reaction, we have to divide the total load by 2. To calculate the total load, we have to find the area. Consider a second degree parabola having breadth B and height H. The formula for area is 2 by 3 into breadth into height. Using the formula, we can calculate the area. Breadth is 8. Height is 288 upon EI. We can apply in the formula. After the calculation, we are getting 768 upon EI. Then, let us add these two values. After adding, we are getting this. Finally, we have calculated delta L matrix. Alternatively, we can calculate the reactions. If in a simply supported beam, UVL is acting in the shape of a isosceles triangle. The formula for reactions are WL upon 4 and WL upon 4. Let us consider this case. Here W is 190 and L is 10 meter. We can apply in the formula. Finally, we are getting 450 upon EI. If in the simply supported beam, UVL is acting in the shape of a parabola, the formula for reactions are WL upon 3 and WL upon 3. Here, W is 288 upon EI, L is 8 meter. We can apply in the formula. Finally, we are getting this. Here also, we are getting the same value for delta L matrix. In the delta L matrix, we are having only one value because we are having only one coordinate. In this formula, we have calculated delta L matrix. Now, let us calculate delta matrix. 
if in the beam there is overhanging, we have to calculate the delta matrix, otherwise we can simply enter 0. In the given beam, there is no overhanging. So let us apply 0. The size of the del matrix will be similar to the size of delta L matrix. Here we are having only one value. So in the delta matrix also we will have only one value because our coordinate is only 1. In this formula, we have calculated the delta matrix and the delta L matrix. Only one is remaining, that is the flexibility matrix. Now, let us see the size of the flexibility matrix. If there are three coordinates, the size will be 3 by 3. If there are two coordinates, the size will be 2 by 2. If there is only one coordinate, the size will be 1 by 1. That means there will be only one value. In this analysis, we are having only one coordinate. So the size will be 1 by 1. Now let us see how to make the flexibility matrix. For that, we have to apply unit movement in the coordinate. In this analysis, we are having only one coordinate that is in the point B. So in the point B, we have to apply unit movement. We know that unit movement is 1. In the beam AB, the unit movement will be acting in the anticlockwise direction. Because of the movement, here the bending movement will be 1. Here it will be 0. So the bending movement diagram will be a triangular shape. In the beam BC, the unit movement will be acting in the clockwise direction. Because of the movement, here the bending movement will be 1. Here it will be 0. Here also we are having a triangular shape bending movement diagram. Then we have to convert the bending movement diagram into conjugative beam. We know that for conjugative beam, we have to divide the bending movement by EI. To calculate delta, we have to find the slope in the point B. In the conjugate beam, the slope is the shear force. So in the point B dash, we have to find the shear force. Here the shear force is RB dash. So let us calculate the reaction RB dash. These are not symmetrical diagrams. So it is not easy to calculate the reactions. This is a right triangle. The area formula is half into breadth into height. The centroid distance on the left side is 2B upon 3. On the right side is B upon 3. Now I am going to calculate RB dash. For that I am going to take moment about A dash. In this case I am moving towards left hand side. Clockwise will be negative. Anticlockwise will be positive. The RB dash is acting towards the point A. In the anticlockwise direction, so it will be positive and the distance is at 10 meter. So 10 RB dash. For the UVL, we have to multiply the area with the centroid. The area is half into 10 into 1 upon EI. The centroid is 2 by 3 into 10. Finally, we are getting RB dash. Now let us take B dash C dash and find out RB dash. To calculate RB dash, I am going to take movement about C dash. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. Clockwise will be positive, anticlockwise will be negative. RB dash is acting towards the point C dash in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive and the distance is 8 meter. So 8 RB dash. For the UVL, we have to multiply the area with the centroid. The area is half into 8 into 1 by EI. The centroid is 2 by 3 into 8. Finally, we are getting RB dash. Let us add both of the values. After adding, we are getting 18 by 3 EI. Finally, we have calculated the delta matrix, which is equal to 6 by EI. Alternatively, we can use the formula. If in the simply supported beam, right triangle UVL is acting. The formula for reactions are WL upon 3 and WL upon 6. 
but we want this reaction which is equal to WL upon 3 using the formula we can easily calculate RB dash then we have to add both of the values finally we are getting the same value for theta matrix in this formula we have calculated all of the values we have calculated the flexibility matrix delta matrix and delta L matrix we can apply all of the values 0 minus 1218 we will get minus 1218 when we make 6 upon EI inverse we will get EI upon 6 then we can cut this EI and EI 1218 upon 6 we will get 203 we know that P matrix is the final moment matrix in this problem we had only one coordinate in the coordinate B we removed MB so the final answer will be MB so in this analysis we have calculated the moment MB which is equal to minus 203 kN meter now let us calculate the reactions in this beam we are having two spans span AB and span BC so we have to split the beam into two parts for span AB and for span BC in the span AB the moment MB will be acting in the clockwise direction for the span BC the moment will be acting in the anti-clockwise direction first let us take the span AB and calculate the reactions in this span first I am going to calculate the reaction RA for that I am going to take moment about B in this case I am moving towards right hand side clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative the reaction RA is acting towards the point B in the clockwise direction so it will be positive and the distance is 10 meter so 10 RA the point load is acting towards the point B in the anticlockwise direction so it will be negative and the distance is 5 meter so minus 72 into 5 the moment is acting in the clockwise direction so it will be positive finally we are getting Ra is equal to 15.7 kN to find out Rb1 let us apply the rule summation of vertical forces is equal to 0 we are having three vertical forces Ra and Rb1 are acting upwards so they will be positive the point load 72 kN is acting downwards so it will be negative Ra we have already calculated we can apply that after calculation we are getting Rb1 is equal to 56.3 kN now let us take the span BC and find out the reactions in this span first let us calculate Rb2 for that I am going to take moment about C the vertical reaction Rb2 is acting towards the point C in the clockwise direction so it is positive and the distance is 8 meter so 8 Rb2 the UDL is acting towards the point C in the anticlockwise direction so it will be negative when the UDL comes we have to multiply the load with the distance and half distance the distance is 8 meter half distance is 8 by 2 the moment is acting in the anticlockwise direction so it will be negative finally we are getting RB2 now let us calculate RC for that let us apply the rule summation of vertical forces is equal to 0 in this span we are having three vertical forces RB2, RC and UDL RB2 and RC are acting upwards so they will be positive the UDL is acting downwards so it will be negative for the UDL we have to multiply with the distance to get the total load RB2 we have already calculated we can apply that
Finally, we are getting RC. We have calculated the reaction in the point B two times. So, we have to add them. After adding, we are getting RB, which is equal to 225.675 kN. Now, we are going to draw the shear force diagram. Before drawing shear force diagram, let us calculate the shear force values. I am calculating the shear force values from the point A to the point C. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. The upward forces will be positive. The downward forces will be negative. You can see the calculations here. For the point loads, we have to calculate the shear force at just left of the point and just right of the point. Now you can see the shear force diagram. If there is UDL, the shear force line will be inclined. You can see that in the span BC we are having UDL. That is why we are getting inclined line. For the point loads, it will be a straight line. In the shear force diagram, if you are getting negative values, we have to draw below this line. If you are getting positive values, we have to draw above the line and then mark positive and negative. Now we are going to draw the bending moment diagram. Before drawing bending moment diagram, let us make the free moment diagram and end moment diagram. The free moment diagram is made using the loads in the beam. The end moment diagram is made using the end moments we have calculated. For the free moment diagram, we have to consider each span as a separate assembly supported beam. We know that for a simply supported beam, if the point load is acting on the center, the formula for maximum bending moment is WL by 4. We are getting 180. If UDL is acting, the formula for maximum bending moment is WL square by 8. We are getting 288. If the free movement diagram comes above the line, that will be positive. Right now, both of the diagrams are coming above the line, so they are positive. In rare cases, it may come downside when there are coupled moments. Now, let us make the end moment diagram. In the point A and in the point C, the moment is zero. We already saw that. In the point B, we are having a moment 203. If the end moment diagram is having negative value, we have to draw it above the line. If it is having positive value, we have to draw below the line. In this case, we got a negative value, so we draw above the line and mark as negative. Now, let us draw the bending moment diagram. For that, we have to combine the free moment diagram and the end moment diagram. After combining, wherever they are acting alone without mingling, we have to mark them. Here, we are having the free moment diagram alone. So, we are marking as positive. Here, end moment diagram, so negative. Here, free moment diagram, so positive. Then, we have to mark the values also. Wherever the free moment diagram and the end moment diagram are acting together, we are not marking anything. We just keep the space empty. If you are very experienced, no need to draw the free moment diagram and the end moment diagram. We can directly draw the bending moment diagram. We are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.